Hello again. Uh, this video is uh, the third in a three-part series, and it's uh, it's on how the data is read on a CD. Uh, and in the last video, we uh, we had a, a laser pointed at our landing over our bump, a little bit of bump and a little bit of land. Uh, these things here. This is an electron micrograph of the CD surface, and uh, we described in the last video that this is a bump. And this area here is land, and I'll refer to them throughout this video. Um, so this uh, this the, the laser diode actually starts out at 780 nanometers, and and it goes to when it goes through the plastic, the plastic surface that that bottom layer on the CD, it it changes it, and uh, because because it has a refractive index of 1.55. It changes this the the wavelength of the light that's landing on the on the metal surface on the aluminium surface to 503 nanometers, uh, which is in the green region of the spectrum. So um, when when it lands there, uh, uh, well, it's over a bump. We know that when uh, when when it reaches the end of the bump, it, it starts to read one, and then zero zero zero. When when it reaches the start of a bump. And then the end of a bump, it reads a one. So how does it do this? Well, um, you can see. Well, actually, one thing that's important that I haven't mentioned is that the height of the bump, um, and the height of the bump here, um, if you could imagine these as like islands, the how how much that island stands up out of the ocean here, uh, it, it's it's zero point one. Uh, 0 0.1 by 10 to the minus 6 meters, which is uh, about, or is exactly 110 nanometers, which happens to be also about a quarter of that wavelength. Okay, so um, we have 503 nanometers, 110 nanometers. Uh, it's about a quarter of that, and that's important. Uh, if you understand anything about interference, um, you'll see that um, when this, when when the laser reaches this surface, it's reflected off, and and the area here, or the areas either side of that bump, these areas here, actually have a longer path to travel than the area in the centre, and um, and 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 hence uh, when if this, because a laser is uh, uh, is a coherent wave source, it's also in phase. If when it lands on this surface, it's it's in phase. But uh, when it, by the time it leaves the surface and comes back, this area here, uh, and I'll just colour that in yellow. This area here where the bump is, compared to the area that's green there on the land. Uh, is is a is a half a wavelength out of phase, and that's because if we can we look in cross section at that bump. Uh, now I'll colour the bump uh, a similar colour to what it is, grey. Um, this is our land. This is our bump. Okay, and we have our our, our green light here. This is what you're looking at. Uh, on the CD surface there from the top, and we have our yellow area there. So I hope you can understand my diagram there. Um, this this light uh, has, in fact, because this distance here is our 110 nanometers, and and so this light has it's a one quarter of a wavelength, so it has to travel down and up again. And in doing so, it's a half a wavelength out of phase with the light that's landing here. So, okay. So this, imagine this is this is our yellow path. I'm drawing these in two different colours for the path difference. Now, the path difference between the yellow and the path difference between the green is a half a wavelength because it has to travel. The green has to travel a half a quarter of the wavelength down further. And another quarter of a wavelength up further, and so what we have is um, I'll, I'll draw the green first. Oh, sorry, big button, the yellow first, and 
uh, what we have is the laser is in phase going down like so and coming up uh, we have this happening out of phase by half a wavelength and so what happens here is we have destructive interference and this light is uh, dis this light is destructively interfering with this light here and and we have a, a change in the intensity of the light that's leaving that CD surface and that change in intensity causes the photodiode now um, we the, the uh, device that eventually reads this information that reads the reflected light is called a photodiode it's just basically a photoelectric cell uh, that passes a current depending on how much light is landing on it now um, th this light that's out of phase um, causing destructive interference means that uh, the light that re reaches the photodiode when over a bump is is uh, less intense than the light that that is just being reflected off the land, and and so that's how the photodiode uh, basically reads whether it the the laser light is travelling over a bump or whether it's travelling over land, and that's how we read that data. Um, I guess the um, the final thing that uh, I wanted to mention also was how these uh, lasers track. Now you know that um, the CD is spinning at uh, several different types of R RPM or several different revs per minute and um, in order to know that uh, this central laser beam is reading over the bumps, is reading in the correct area and, and hasn't travelled left or right, we have two other beams and one, imagine the, uh, the laser is effectively reading in this direction here, that's not very good, can't see that very well. Effectively they're reading that direction. Uh, we have two other laser beams and uh, one before it and one behind it and they read the land and if they happen to travel over a bump if they if if the if the laser moves shifts this way then then this one here will 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 hit a bump and cause destructive interference or if it moves if the laser moves that way then then this one will hit a bump and cause destructive interference and that destructive interference is read by uh other other photodiodes and 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 the c d player itself corrects as a result um I think that's all. Uh, that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, thanks for watching.